This is CBN News Watch. And it is Friday, April 16, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, an overnight shooting at a FedEx facility. W what we've learned about that deadly incident we'll be sharing with you. Anger in the streets of Chicago following footage of a shooting that took a teenager's life. An attempt to pack the courts Why there's bipartisan pushback. And how the Museum of the Bible is celebrating a D.C. holiday. All those stories and more are ahead in this edition of CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour with this. Today we are learning about another mass shooting in America. This one unfolded in Indiana last night at a FedEx facility. Eight people lost their lives and police say the shooter killed himself. Several other people were injured when gunfire erupted at the facility near the Indianapolis International Airport. At least four have been taken to the hospital. Police say it is too early at this hour to tell whether the shooter was an employee at the facility. Protesters took to the street in Chicago last night after the police department released footage that shows a 13-year-old Latino boy dropping his handgun and raising his hands less than a second before a white police officer shot and killed him last month. A still frame taken from Officer Eric Stillman's body camera footage shows Adam Toledo wasn't holding anything and had his hands at least partially up when Stillman shot him in the chest at 2.30 in the morning on March 29th. Mayor Lightfoot has asked citizens to remain calm after seeing the video. The officer has been placed on administrative duties pending the outcome of this investigation. We turn now to the release of the footage and other investigation materials come with a, they come at a sensitive time with the ongoing trial in Minneapolis of former police officer Derek Chauvin. Yesterday, Chauvin spoke for the first time in the George Floyd case. He invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and did not take the stand in his murder trial. I have repeatedly advised you that this is your decision and your decision alone, right? Correct. We have gone back and forth on the matter would be kind of an understatement, right? Yes, it is. Have you made a decision uh, today whether you intend to testify or whether you intend to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege? Uh, I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege today. Chauvin's attorney is trying to prove the 19-year Minneapolis police veteran did what he was trained to do and that George Floyd died because of his illegal drug use and underlying health problems. Turning now to politics, some influential Democrats on Capitol Hill are working to pack the Supreme Court with new justices appointed by President Joe Biden. But as Jennifer Wishon explains, the plan is getting bipartisan pushback. Standing in front of the Supreme Court Thursday, congressional Democrats introduced the Judiciary Act of 2021. They say the court's standing is damaged because President Trump and Senate Republicans added three new justices. And the way we repair it is straightforward. We undo the damage that the Republicans have done by restoring balance. And we do it by adding four seats to the court to create a 13-member Supreme Court. Four new seats to be filled by President Biden. Some people will say we're packing the court. We're not packing it. We're unpacking it. Senator McConnell and the Republicans packed the court over the last couple of years. Liberal activists had pushed for the idea, but not all Democrats are on board. I think if you uh, try to expand it uh, right now, that's going to further polarize and tear apart this country. Packing the court was a big issue during the election, and last week President Biden set up a commission to look at possible court reforms. One of the issues they'll look at is, of course, the size of the court, uh, but they'll also look at the court's role in the constitutional system, the length of service, the turnover of justices. For now, Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's not bringing the bill to the House floor. I don't know that that's a good idea or a bad idea. I think it's a, an idea that should be considered, and I think the president's taking the right approach uh, to um, to have a commission to study such a thing. It's a big step. She clearly doesn't have the vote. She's a good vote counter. She does not have the votes uh, on the House floor. Uh, she doesn't have those moderate Democrats to go along. But if you have the commission that she supports and you go with that first and then you get the commission results, then the bill, I think that's the trick for Democrats of how they're going to try to do this. Republicans say it's another example of Democrats wanting to change the rules when they don't get their way. Now, if Republicans had introduced a bill to add four Supreme Court seats for the last president to fill, 
there would have been weeks of wall-to-wall -wall outrage on every newspaper and cable TV channel. The president famously didn't take a position on the issue during the campaign, but he did That's say this. I've already spoken on, I, I'm not a fan of pack, uh, court packing. And the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a liberal icon, was also against it, telling NPR in 2019, nine seems to be a good number. Well, if anything would make the court appear partisan, it would be that. One side saying, when we're in power, we're going to enlarge the number of judges, so we will have more people who will vote the way we want them to. In a speech last week, Justice Stephen Breyer, appointed by President Clinton, spoke against court packing, saying, think long and hard before embodying those changes in law. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. President Joe Biden says America will end its longest war and withdraw all U.S. troops from, Af from Afghanistan by September 11th. NATO announced it will do the same. This will end the almost 20-year military mission after 2,300 Americans and over 40,000 Afghan civilians have been killed. The pullout was first negotiated last year by President Donald Trump, who signed a deal with the Taliban. President Biden says the U.S. will remain committed to Afghanistan. CBN's David Brody also spoke about the troop withdrawal with the number two Republican in the Senate, Senator John Thune from South Dakota. Well, let me start with this. First on Afghanistan, I, I guess the bottom line is, is what's going to happen here? Is this the right move by President Biden to fully pull out all of our troops? It is not the right move. Um, I think it's a big mistake. The, I know there's a lot of pressure from the left in this country to get out of Afghanistan, but we have a lot invested there over a long period of time. And the one thing that we don't want to do is create the conditions there that are favorable for uh, terrorist organizations to um, train and prepare and plan attacks against the United States. And the one thing that the question they can't answer is what happens with the, with the Taliban if they're back in charge in Afghanistan. These decisions need to be conditions-based, David. They need to be based on what's happening on the ground, not artificial timelines. We've said that repeatedly. Yeah, we, have a, we don't have a big force there right now, but we, we haven't lost uh, lives there of late. But we need to maintain uh, an adequate force to ensure that all the gains that we've achieved there these past many years, which have come a great sacrifice, both in the form, form of loss of lives and injuries to a lot of American servicemen and women, that those uh, are not in vain. We turn now to Russia, where the foreign minister was asked why it has tens of thousands of troops deployed along Ukraine's eastern border. He replied, the answer is very simple. We live there. It is our country. Moscow has amassed troops, tanks, artillery and armored personnel carriers along its shared border with Ukraine in recent weeks, prompting concerns in Washington and European capitals about Russia's ambitions. Our George Thomas is taking a closer look. Living along Ukraine's border with Russia are once again bracing for possible war. People in eastern Ukraine are really scared. Michael Cherenkov with the Christian group Mission Eurasia just returned from the front line. Mission Eurasia runs several bread-making facilities in the war zone. Cherenkov says recent violence between Ukrainian soldiers and Russian-backed separatists has everyone there on edge. They expect a Russian invasion uh, any time. Moscow has reportedly massed more than 80,000 troops in recent weeks along Ukraine's eastern border. Peter Dickinson with the Atlantic Council tells CBN News the world should be concerned about Russia's deployment of tanks, artillery and armored personnel carriers. The buildup is certainly designed to give the impression that Russia is prepared to launch a major offensive. Ukraine's president, following a recent tour with soldiers on the border, urged Russia to pull its troops back. Stephen Pfeiffer, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, tells CBN News that Moscow's tactic is to scare the government in Kiev and also test the West's reaction. This is basically Russian saber rattling designed to unnerve Kiev. Uh, the, the Russians do this periodically, although this is quite uh, different in terms of the scale. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressing concern about Russia's troop buildup. We have real concerns about Russia's actions on the borders of Ukraine. There are more Russian forces massed on those borders than at any time since 2014. The question is, uh, is Russia going to continue to act aggressively and recklessly? If it does, 
uh, the president's been clear, there'll be costs. The White House, however, not saying whether the U.S. would intervene if Moscow launched an invasion. Still, two U.S. Navy destroyers are headed to the Black Sea as a warning to Russia. Ukrainian forces and Russia-backed separatists have been fighting in eastern Ukraine since Moscow's 2014 annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. More than 14,000 people have died in the conflict as efforts to reach a peace agreement have stalled. Meanwhile, Cherenkov's group remains in the war zone, helping not only feed the hungry, but also share the gospel with those living on the front lines. We encourage local people to trust God, to pray, and that's our uh, Christian message, just to turn their uh, hearts toward God and uh, Jesus Christ. George Thomas, CBN News. Israel is on the brink of a post-COVID life, and the country is prepared to welcome visitors again. Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell joining us now to talk more about this. So, Chris, this news is coming more than a year after Israel closed its border to foreigners to fight the spread of the coronavirus. What's making the country more comfortable now? Well, right now, uh, Ephraim, there's lower COVID cases and there's lower mortality. In fact, the cases right now here in Israel have been down 97 percent just in the last couple of months uh, since January. Uh, and that's due to the fact that more than half the country right now, uh, 4.9 million people have received uh, both the vaccination shots. And uh, one expert has actually gone so far as to say we're at sort of a herd immunity right now, and uh, which Israel actually could be the first in the world to get that. And that's all due to that massive vaccination uh, effort by uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. And also this coming Sunday, in just a couple of days, uh, Israel is going to be lifting its outside mask mandate. You still have to wear a mask if you go inside, but uh, a lot of Israelis are pretty excited about that, and they're, they're enjoying uh, the new sense of freedom here uh, in Israel. I can imagine. Now, there are restrictions to uh, this move. Tell us what's required of tourist groups uh, and when can they come in? Yeah, well, that's what a lot of people have been asking me. You know, when can tourists uh, re-enter uh, Israel? It's been over a year now since uh, tourists have been able to come in. Uh, on May 23rd next month, uh, the, both the health ministry and the tourism ministry agreed that small groups can come allowed, uh, come in, but they must be fully vaccinated. In other words, uh, probably two shots of the Pfizer, for example. They have to have a negative COVID test before they actually get on the plane. And then once they get here, they have to have a serology test, which means they prove they have the antibodies against the uh, COVID-19. Uh, but it's a small beginning, but great news for the tourism industry, uh, which is one of the largest here in Israel. I can imagine. Is this a sign you think the country is going to fully reopen soon? It's on its way. It's in stages, uh, both internally here. I mean, for example, uh, yesterday was the uh, Independence Day. Uh, thousands of Israelis went to the parks uh, and, uh, and enjoyed uh, barbecues. Uh, they didn't do that last year. And, and also, so I think in stages and also in outside, I think they're working with other countries to accept their vaccination, uh, also allowing some immigrants to come in on an emergency basis. But I think Israel is step by step on its way uh, to being open both internally and to the rest of the world. Before we let you go real quick, what's on Jerusalem Dateline this evening? Well, first of all, we have a story about the controversial green passport, which means people that aren't vaccinated are, are limited to uh, certain places they can go. We have an exciting story about the Tower of David uh, Museum, where they discovered what's called a Tyre uh, coin. It was used to uh, pay the temple tax, really bringing the Gospels alive. And we have a miracle birth, uh, the birth of Israel story about independence, which Israelis celebrated yesterday. All right, Chris Mitchell, thank you so much. I want to remind you at home that you can see more news from the Middle East and Chris Mitchell, as well as the entire team there. You can watch it at 8.30 Eastern. That is Jerusalem Dateline this evening. Back here in the United States, the number of new coronavirus infections is trending in the wrong direction. In just the past month, the United States has seen a 30 percent increase in new cases. In hotspots like Michigan, at least 24 hospitals say they're reporting at 90 percent capacity. It's just no more room. ICUs are filling up. Unfortunately, ventilators are being taken up as well. The surge comes as Pfizer reveals those who get its two-shot vaccine might need a third jab within a year, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine right now is still on pause. 
The Centers for Disease Control has a new report on the health impact of keeping middle seats open. Delta Airlines is the only major airline that has its empty middle seats policy active, but that it, it but that is set to end actually May 1st. This comes as the CDC says that having passengers sit farther apart on places helps to reduce exposure to viruses like COVID-19. It used data from 2017, so the test subjects did not have masks on. Airlines have multiple measures in place to prevent the spread of COVID, including having passengers fill out pre-health forms using disinfection protocols and hospital-grade ventilation systems. Coming up, how your tax dollars are really being spent. We've got the story for you when we come back. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Government spending and waste. A new report shows exactly how Congress can misuse your tax dollars. And some of it might leave you shaking your head. CBN's Paul Strand did some digging into the newly released Pig Report. A number of lawmakers still concerned about spending and deficits joined in a virtual news conference to highlight out-of-control spending they say could eventually bankrupt America. There's a dirty little secret in this town, and there's a consensus that says spending and debt just don't matter. The 2021 Pig Book highlights some of Capitol Hill's latest cases of wasteful spending. $1.7 billion for 17 F-35 jet fighters not even requested by the Pentagon. $663,000 to help wipe out the brown tree snake. $19.7 million handed over to the East-West Center in Hawaii, though there was no formal budget request for it. Tom Schatz, who oversees the annual pig book, points out after a supposed 10-year ban, these wasteful earmark projects have returned, but in disguise. The new earmarks are called Community Project Funding, an absurd designation that covers almost everything the government does. Senator Rand Paul points out the pig book says these pork barrel projects are back with a vengeance. It highlights 285 earmarks costing $16.8 billion. For far too long, earmarks have been used as a form of legal bribery, enabling party bosses to pass irresponsible and bloated spending that has ballooned government spending and added to our staggering $28 trillion national debt. And they warn that much worse is still ahead, thanks to President Biden's massive infrastructure bill. Two trillion plus, plus, plus. The number keeps growing. Only about 6% will go for things like roads and bridges, while the rest covers a wide range. On silly things like a squirrel sanctuary in Tennessee, or turtle tunnels in Florida, and critter crossings in Vermont. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. 
On October 1, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. Administering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover Life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Basketball legend Michael Jordan is honoring one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Kobe Bryant. CBN Sports Director Sean Brown joins us now to talk about this historic moment. So, Sean, the Nazareth Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame announced the list of Hall of Famers. Can you break down the significance of this event? I tell you, man, this event, what it does is it highlights basketball excellence and genius. Players, coaches, men and women who basically did it better than everyone else. Um, they helped to advance the game of basketball, both on the court and off the court. Um, and I, I tell you, man, this class is is uh, pretty amazing, man, with, with the names that are coming, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but I'll tell you, um, the significance of, of Jordan uh, presenting for Kobe. Of course, Kobe um, looked up to uh, Michael Jordan, modeled his game after him from the crossover, the step back jumper, uh, the work ethic, um, just just trying to be as best he could, even though he, he got five championships uh, and, and not six. He didn't get six, but he did get five. And uh, when it comes to coaches, you're looking at coaches, you know they're going to have a great team. For players like Kobe Bryant, you could not take your eyes off of them. You wanted to see what they were going to do with the, with the ball next. Um, and they just help to advance the game. And so it's just a really, really exciting uh, to see uh, these players and coaches honored um, uh, during this event. Mm, indeed. Talk more about who else is being honored during this event. Ephraim, man, listen to these names. Uh, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Dave Robinson, Isaiah Thomas. Come on, man. WNBA legend, Tamika Ketchens, uh, NBA coach uh, Rudy Tomjanovich, uh, longtime FIBA uh, exec uh, Patrick Bauman, who... Uh, passed away in 2018 on the college ranks. Barbara Stevens, Kim Mulkey, uh, of course, um, Eddie Sutton, who we lost uh, last May, uh, a longtime uh, Oklahoma State coach. Um, and so just listen to those names. These people helped to advance the game. You could not take your eyes off of them when they were on the court and when they were coaching. You knew their team was going to be uh, competitive. And so uh, this award, obviously, this is a celebration of their accomplishments in basketball. Mm, great class indeed. Before we let you go, what's coming up on Going the Distance this weekend? Well, hey, you know, we just finished talking about uh, basketball and, and the greatness of these players and coaches. Well, we, I've got Dan Gable, wrestling coach legend and uh, legend himself, talking about what it takes to win. Everybody works hard, but there's a slither of of, of, of people that do a little bit more than just working hard. You've got to have some other things. And he talks about those things that build champions. Look forward to that one. Remind you at home that you can watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown this weekend. You can find it on the CBN News Channel. You can find it Saturday at 630 and Sunday at 730, both Eastern Standard Times. Thank you so much, Sean. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Family Fun is back in time for summer. Universal Studios Hollywood reopened this week. Today marks the first day it's open to the general public. The park yesterday reopened for annual and season pass holders. There are temperature checks in place at the entrances and mandatory social distancing while waiting in line. The Museum of the Bible is inviting everyone to observe the 159th anniversary of the D.C. Emancipation Day. That is today. The museum will hold special educational activities for the holiday that is local to our nation's capital. The day commemorates the day President Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery and freed more than 3,000 enslaved people in the district in 1862. That was one year before he issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Before we say goodbye, it's time for your Friday Faithful. And today I leave you with this thought. There is nothing too hard for God. He can do everything except fail. There is no failure in him. Know this, he will hear you when you call, catch you when you fall, and he will always be there. There is no failure in him. With that word, make this a fabulous Friday and a faith-filled Friday as well. That's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there anytime, as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at CBN.com, the email address right there at the bottom of your screen. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and would love to hear from you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.